John, uh, chapter 2, the last couple of verses there, 1 John. We've been looking at the subject of spiritual growth. I've, I've given you a diagram. Uh, I didn't know I was going to have it on the handout, so I'd, I'd made this. I thought, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and put it up anyway. Um, and tonight, the, the subject is hope. 1 John chapter 2, I'm going to start reading in verse 28 and read on down through chapter 3, verse 3. There's so many scriptures I was using uh, tonight that I went ahead and typed out most of them to give you there, and that'll, uh, well, you can, you can see them quite easily. 1 John chapter 2, verse 28. There's a few that we'll look up in our, our Bibles, um, some in Romans and then this in 1 John. 1 John 2, 28, he says, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. There's the verse that we were, were coming to. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. And verse 2 gives us that hope. The Bible tells us that we are going to be with Jesus and we're going to be like Jesus. You know, we, we struggle with that now. Trying to be like Jesus. You know, we can, It's easy to sing. Uh, but sometimes it's hard to do. But God has given us the promise. Yeah, it doesn't appear exactly now. Yeah, we don't see Jesus exactly in my life, in your life. But we will. God says, uh, we shall be like him. And because of that hope, he says, we have the urge to grow, in, to grow spiritually, uh, to be like Jesus. We have God's promise. Um, you know, we've, we've been looking at this, this idea of growing spiritually, and we, we've seen that it, it's all built on Scripture. We're not going to grow without the Scripture. And the Bible says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. And we're not going to grow in Scripture if we're not obedient to it. You know, it's not enough to know what the Bible says. We need to do what the Bible says. Be ye hearers of the Word, not be ye... <laughs> I better get that right. Be ye doers of the Word and not hearers <laughs> I uh, had the, uh, uh, the liberal version there. <laughs> uh, we have to obey God's word, and we need the Holy Spirit's help. We need spirit filling to do that. Uh, and we need to see what that, what that means. We need to confess our sins. Sin will keep us from God's word. Sin will keep us from growing. Uh, we need to love the Lord, and we need to be praying. Uh, and, and we need that hope that, that, that we that can only get from God. As we read here tonight, to know what the process is leading to, to know what God is doing, uh, what we're expecting. Uh, we should be expecting to be like Jesus and to be with Jesus. You know, you can put up with just about anything if you know it's temporary. <laughs> and that's been my theory when I've filled in at churches. <laughs> I figured, man, they can put up with me when they know it's temporary. Uh, you guys are stuck with me, but, uh, you know, it, it's interesting that uh, there's things that, you know, there's times, I should say, when five minutes seems like nothing. There's other times when five minutes seems like an eternity. But if you know it's just temporary, you know, if you're going through some, some pain, you know, the dentist is working or the doctor is working or, or whatever, uh, you can put up with it because you know, hey, I expect this to change. And you know, God wants us to have hope. And the whole purpose of growing spiritually is the glory of God. It's not just for us to feel better. It's not just to impress people. Ooh, boy, he's a, he's a good Christian. No, it's for the glory of God. And God, God wants you to have hope. You can put it another way. God has given you hope. And we'll see as we look at some of these scriptures that uh, you know, hope is a gift. Now, Romans chapter 5, uh, verses 1 and 2. I think I've got it there on, on your page. Therefore, being justified by faith... We have peace with God. Now, uh, this scripture is on, on the front page of your, your verses there. 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And because of our salvation, we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We've been justified by faith. God did that. We have peace with God. God did that. <laughs> and we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand. You know, all the things that God has done, we have access and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Someday we're going to be with Jesus. Someday we're going to be like Jesus. Now, the foundation uh, for biblical hope is, is so important for us to see. I was going to mention, when you counsel people, when you counsel people scripturally, one of the first things you do is you establish hope, biblical hope. You show them God has a solution. God has an answer. God, God is going to do something good here. And, you know, tonight, as, as we look at, at God's Word, we need to understand there is hope. And it's based, if you look inside there at Psalm 43, verse 5, it's based on God Himself. The psalmist asks, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise Him who is the health of my countenance and my God. You know, why should we be down in the dumps? Why should we be uh, cast down? Hope in God. And our hope is built on His character. You know, God doesn't change from day to day like we do. God is, is immutable. Titus chapter 1, verse 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. That's where our hope is, is with God who cannot lie, and He's promised us it's eternal. <laughs> we were talking about that the other day, you know. People who believe you can lose your salvation, God calls it eternal life. We need to understand that. Uh, our, our hope is in God's character. Uh, you can go through a lot of areas. You know, God has revealed that He's holy, that He's righteous, that He's merciful, that He is love. You know, we can expect God to do the things that match His character because that's the way He is. And God's Word reveals who God is and, and what He's done. Look at Romans 15, 4 there. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scripture might have hope. You know, through the Scripture, we can see what God is like. We can see what He's done in the past. Listen, God will always judge sin. God will always reward righteousness. And because we don't have any righteousness of our own, He says He'll, He'll justify us. He'll give us His. He'll declare us righteous. Now, what a wonderful God we have. Uh, we see God's character in God the Son. 1 Peter 1.3 it says, Blessed be the God and, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You know, we see the resurrection of Jesus and, man, it gives us hope. Uh, we know that uh, Christ has conquered death. Uh, he calls us to, uh, to new life. Colossians 1 he says, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you've heard and which was preached. In verse 27, he uses the phrase, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's our hope. <laughs> he's, he's in us. He's with us. Someday we'll be with him and, and like him in, in glory. What a blessing. God's Holy Spirit is involved. This is one of my favorite verses, Romans 15, uh, uh, verse, uh, verse 13. Where he says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. See, God's Holy Spirit helps us. And we see uh, through, through God's Holy Spirit what God has done and, and what He is. You know, stop and ask yourself, when you're feeling down, when you're feeling, I, won't, I hate to use the word hopeless, where do, where do you turn? You know, a lot of us have certain things we do physically. Some people go turn to the fridge, <laughs> don't they? And boy, they, you know, they, oh, this is comfort food, we say, you know. Or, uh, some people turn to drugs, don't they? Uh, some people run away. You know, there's all kinds of things. We need to turn to the God of hope. Amen. Uh, we need to quit taking those weak and worthless substitutes and go to God himself. That's, uh, that's the key. 
Uh, that's the foundation of biblical hope, is God. Other foundation is no foundation. You know, people say, oh, I, I, my hope is here. Listen, if it's not God, it's, there's no hope. The next verse there is Ephesians 2, uh, verse 12. He says, At that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. Boy, what a description. That's people before Christ. The next verse says, But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. See the difference in those two verses? The, the first verse is, Ye were without Christ, but now in Christ Jesus. Ask yourself, which verse represents you? Are you still in verse 12? Without Christ? That's the verse, no hope. Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off were made nigh by the blood of Christ. Uh, boy, it's important that our hope be in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Uh, what, a, what a blessing that is. Your hope is what you live for. Your expectation. What do you live for? Uh, uh, this is maybe not the exact right way to put it, but never live for something that can be burned. <laughs> you know, Matthew chapter 6, this is not in your, your sheet there, but Matthew 6 where, is where he says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. It doesn't talk about things burning, but you get the idea. You know, things that are temporary are not where you want to put your, your hope. I was thinking about it this afternoon. I mean, my hope can't even be in my wife. My hope can't be in my children. For children, it can't be in our parents. It can't be in my health, my body, my, my job my country. I mean, you could go on and on, couldn't you? That's not our hope. Now, God says whatever you, your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, you know. Now, we're to do what we do and do it with high quality and do it to win and, and so on. But that's not our hope. Yeah, I often think when I see some of these magnificent sporting events, you know, the Olympics or the Super Bowl or the Grand Final or whatever, you know the next day is one of the worst day of those people's lives? Oh, that's over. What do I do now? <laughs> you see, if that was their hope, it's over. That's not our hope, folks. It's, it's not found in those things that can, can pass away. God wants you to have hope. God wants you to have hope in real life. Not just a feeling. Listen, if you just want a feeling, do drugs. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll do it. Yeah. Don't do it. I'm just kidding. 2 Thessalonians 2 there in your sheet, verses 16 and 17 says, God gives you hope as a gift. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. You see there in the, in the middle he says he's given us everlasting consolation and he's given us good hope through grace. Now that's what he was talking about in, in 1 John 3 and verse 2, how that we, we have that hope that we're going to be with Jesus. We're going to be like Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. He offers hope as a gift. And when you accept God's gift, it changes you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. God takes up residence. God begins a work. It's like we read in, in 1 John 3, 2, we shall be like him. A good example of that was the Apostle Paul. You remember Paul? Man, he, he hated Christians. He would travel as far as he had to to put them out of business and, and even kill them. But when God got a hold of him, it, it changed his life. His hope changed. Yeah, you know, before he'd say, I hope I can kill those Christians. <laughs> then his hope became, I know someday I'm going to be like Jesus, and I want to share that with everybody I can. What a difference it made in, in his life. Turn, if you would, uh, to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And uh, we've read verses 1 and 2. I'll read them again. I'm going to read down through verse 5. Uh, God offers hope as a gift. And when we accept it, it changes us. And as we believe God and cooperate with him, 
our hope will be evident in everyday situations. Let me read Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Wow, what a, what a bunch of verses that is. You know, he says, uh, we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. He says, it's not, just a, it's not just an idea. It has to do with our life. When, when we're going through trouble, man, we know it brings patience. Patience experience, experience hope. Yeah, this is, this is where God rescues me. This is where God makes a change. This is where God blesses me. And hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Yeah, we need to see our hope when we go through trouble. I have hope because, as he, he says here in Romans chapter 5, God is teaching me something. You know, as I go through trouble, I can have hope because God is, I know God is teaching me something. Experience, you know, he talks about the tribulation and, and the patience and the experience and the hope. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse, uh, verse uh, no, I'm ahead of myself there. James chapter 1, he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work that it may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. God is doing a work through our trouble. And uh, we need to let him work. We need to trust him. Uh, so I can have hope uh, because God's teaching me. I can have hope because the Comforter is with me. But like he said in Romans 5.5, 5, uh, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. In Hebrews 13 and verse 5, he said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. You know, God's Holy Spirit is never gone from us as Christians. He's with us. He said he'll, uh, he'll be with us. I can, I can have hope because the Bible says Jesus will help me. And we need to know these things. Hebrews chapter 4, the top of, of the page there. We have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. See, there's, there's hope. When I'm going through trouble, I have hope. God has told me, Jesus will help me. Uh, the Holy Spirit will, uh, will be with me. God is teaching me. You probably know Romans 8.28. I can have hope because God has a good purpose. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to His purpose. And what a blessing it is. Uh, when we go through trouble, what's our hope? Well, we need to get back to God's Word and see, what has God promised me in my tribulation? We need to see what God is doing. We need to claim hope, one, for ourselves. You need to live in hope. God has given you hope. But also for others. We need answers for others. Others need to see us have hope. You know, when we're going through trouble, I, I know there's going to be times when we're down. That's just going to be the way it is. But then you need to look up and, and trust the Lord. And others need to see, hey, their hope is in the Lord. I found over the years, especially here in Australia, when someone gets saved, a lot of times they're the first Christian in their family. And their family thinks, oh, they'll get over it. And a lot of times the first year or two, they won't listen to you. But after a few years, they begin to see changes, and they begin to see you're not giving up. And after three or four, five years sometimes, when they are in trouble, they'll come to you because they see you have hope. At first, they think, oh, they'll get over it. But they see that you're, you're clinging to the Lord. We need it for others. And like he said in Psalm 43, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God. Now, that needs to be us. Now, for ourselves, 
but as well for, for others. We need to see our hope when we go through trouble. We need to see our hope when we're tempted to sin. Well, that happens a lot, doesn't it? I can have hope when I'm tempted to sin because, well, look there at Romans chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. And then verse 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. We can have hope when we're tempted because God has set us free from sin's power. When you got saved, you died to that old way. Your old master has no more call on you. You don't have to serve sin anymore. God has given us that promise. I love this, this next verse. I can have hope when I'm tempted to sin because God limits the temptation. You know 1 Corinthians 10, 13? He says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above the ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Listen, you're going to be tempted. We're going to be tempted. But we need to understand, there'll never come a time when that temptation will be more than you can bear. It's a... It's a lie to say, I couldn't resist it as a Christian. It's just not true. God says he, he makes a way to escape, and he'll help us. We have his promise. First, he set us free. We don't have to give in to sin. We're not slaves to that anymore. And he limits the temptation. And thirdly, God's already won the victory. <laughs> and we're not looking for victory. We already have the victory in Jesus Christ. John 16, 33 Jesus said at the end, end of the verse, In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I love 1 Corinthians 15 where he says, But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's victory in Jesus. It's not your victory or my victory, except that we're in Jesus. It's his victory. Uh, we need to apply this hope when we're tempted. We need to apply this hope when we're troubled. Now, we need to apply this hope in everything, really. Now, God has said we can have his peace and his joy through hope. And when we fail, we can have hope renewed. Now, there'll be times when we fail, but God doesn't give up on us. You know, Isaiah 40, 31, what a great verse. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. God will renew you. You know, though, he, though he fall, he'll, he'll rise up again. You know, God will help you. Uh, now here's the main point of this message. The Christian hope causes us to want to grow spiritually to be like Jesus. You know, like we read there in 1 John 3, 3, Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. God has a built-in motivation uh, for us to want to be like Jesus. He's given us hope. He's given it to us uh, as a gift. Uh, in 1 John there, uh, I need to remind you what uh, verse 2 says, 1 John 3 and verse 2. Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's our hope. We're going to be with Jesus. We're going to be like Jesus. Now, I want to close with a scripture and, and then an illustration. I'd like you to turn to Romans chapter 8, if you would, and verse 22. Romans chapter 8 and verse 22. I'm going to read down through verse 28. We've, already, we've uh, looked at verse 28 already. Romans chapter 8, verse 22. It's interesting to see verse 28 in its context is one of the things I want you to see. Verse 22, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I want you to notice a couple of things there. Verse 22, we know that there's sin and trouble. That's not hard to figure out, is it? But verse 26, we know that God will help us. In verse 20, 28, we know it's going to turn out all right. That's our hope. Do you know how to spell hope? K-N-O-W. <laughs> all right? That's how you spell hope. We know from God's word. And if we don't know that, we don't have hope. God knows the beginning from the end. The illustration I wanted to give you is building a house. Now, just suppose you decided you're going to build a house, brick house. You're going to, get to, you're going to hire a contractor, but you're going to be involved in the, the building of it. So, of course, you get the plans and the drawings. Man, you look at those plans, you say, wow, what a house. This is going to be great. And then you get a builder, and he gives you the promise that he'll help, and, and he'll complete the job. He gives you his guarantee. Wow, this is great. Look at those plans. We've got this builder. But then you have to dig a hole. And you have to carry bricks. And you've got to mix mortar, and, and you've, got to, you've got to do some work. There's something involved in it. You know, we, we live with hope. God says we can know these things. But we, we're not there yet. You know, we're not in heaven yet. I, I love Fellowship Baptist Church, but I can guarantee you, heaven is better than this. <laughs> All right? Uh, there's just things we're going to be going through. But we have the builder's promise. He's going to be with us. He's going to complete the job. In fact, Philippians 1.6, I think I wrote it in there, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God's purpose is that you be like Jesus. And he says, I'll finish the job. You'll be with Jesus. You'll be like Jesus. That's our hope. And we don't see it now. Listen, Ash doesn't look like Jesus. Pastor Bill doesn't look like Jesus. You know, Adrian doesn't look like Jesus. We all have our problems, don't we? There's areas where, man, we need to grow and be like Jesus. But you know, someday we will. We'll be with him. We'll be like him. We'll see him as he is. That's our hope. And it's spelled K-N-O-W. Listen, it's not a hope like, I hope I'll be a super athlete, <laughs> something like that. It's a hope like, I hope the sun comes up soon. We know it's going to happen. We're just waiting for it to appear. And that's our God. You know, there's, there's people who have no hope. We live in a, what word should I use, a sad world. There's a lot of people committing suicide. No hope. There's some who have a false hope. They're happy. There's people in their life, they'll have ten different hopes. <laughs> you know, each one they think, this is it. I've talked to people who said, oh, I'm not afraid to die. And yet, if they died in their sin, they'd go to hell. That's a false hope. As Christians, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Our hope is in Jesus. Our hope is in God's word. Uh, Jesus gives us the purpose for living. Jesus is the only sure foundation. He's the hope for eternity. Now, I'd encourage you to, to know Romans 15, 13. Now, the God of hope, Fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, what a blessing. Now, the result of hope is joy and peace. I think that's what we want. God has given it to us. We're going to close with a, a song it's in your hymnal there. It's page 115. I must tell Jesus. I'll, I'll just lead this one. Page 115. You know, as you're struggling with your life, uh, just talk to Jesus about it. He's the one who gives us hope. Let's stand together as we sing. I'm